We're joined now by Leah Fletcher, the co-founder of De Danu, a company that processes and manufactures hemp in Ireland. We're also joined by Barry Castlin, specialist in energy and rural development at Chagask. Thank you both for coming into us. Okay. Uh, Barry, starting with yourself, Chagask have been involved in research into hemp production since the 1960s. Ed has outlined there that there are a number of components to the plant itself. Can you just outline exactly what is the hemp plant and what are the products that can be made from it? Yeah, the Latin name for hemp is cannabis sativa and uh, it can be, it has been grown in Chagas, as you say, since the 60s and industrial hemp varieties. So industrial hemp is, has a THC or a tetrahydrocannabidiol content of less than 0.2%. So that means it doesn't contain the psychoactive component um, and it's legally allowed to be grown. So you have to get a license from the HPRA in order to grow it. That's the Health Products Regulatory Authority. Um, and we, there is different components to hemp that can be produced from a farmer's perspective. You can produce um, cannabinoids, which can be used to produce CBD oil. And there's an extraction process required there to extract um, uh, um, CBD oil from the, from the leaf or from the, uh, from the seed. You can also produce uh, seed, and that seed can be uh, crushed to produce uh, hemp oil, which is high in the omega-3, 6, and 9, a very healthy oil. And then you can also produce the fiber. And the fiber can be used for everything from insulation material. It can be used for biocomposites, um, even producing bioplastics. So there's a wide uh, variety of components. There's about 50,000 different products that can be produced from hemp. And uh, I think that if we can even focus in on five of those today, there's a lot of high value products, such as biodegradable plastic, such as insulation material that we can new, that we can produce and generate income for farmers in rural areas. So Barry, how many hemp farmers are there in Ireland at the moment? And, and what is the bit that's making money for them? There's about 370 hectares that have been licensed by the HPRA, the Health Products Regulatory Authority, this year in 2019. And the figures are increasing every year. Most of it's been used for um, mainly for seed production and crushing the seed to produce this omega-3, 6 and 9, 9 healthy oil. Um, but that is going to change in the future. There will be opportunities for extraction of the CBD from uh, the seed and also from the leaf. So we are going to see other opportunities there in the, in the near future. In relation to the fibre, there's less opportunities there because we do, we do need processing facilities or infrastructure in order to process the fibre. And that's what's needed there is a decortification plant to separate out the fibres, the shivs, the herds and the dust that can produce that uh, high, high value material for insulation or biocomposites. Like if you take even the likes of BMW and a lot of the big car manufacturers, they're already looking for hemp material to use in their in the cars, in the panels and dashes of their cars. It can also be used to produce a, a hempcrete. So you mix lime with the, with the shivs and uh, you produce hempcrete that can be used in the building and construction industry, a much lower carbon footprint than you would have in using a concrete. And just what about growing the plant in Ireland? Is it easy to grow here? What about uh, the, the inputs involved? Um, is, it, is, it, is the Irish environment a good environment for it to grow in? Yeah, the crop is set around April, May, that time of the year. <clears throat> you want to get it in before the, the last, or just after the frost. Um, but it grows very, very rapidly. And we, we, what we found is there's no need for any pesticides, herbicides or fungicides with the crop because it gets ahead of any weeds very, very quickly. It, so it's a very vigorous type of crop. Um, it, it grows to this tall varieties that grow up to 12, 14 foot in height. The smaller varieties that grow up to six foot in height uh, that you would produce seed from. The taller varieties are mostly associated with fiber production. Um, it would yield anywhere from 10 to 12 ton of dry matter per hectare per year. It's an annual crop, so it's only set once and then it's harv in April, May and it's harvested around September, that time of the year. So as Ed was saying in the intro there, it's harvested for the seed with um, a Kemper header, or uh, sorry, with um, an ordinary combine harvester to harvest the seed. Uh, and then for the fiber varieties, there'll be different types of machinery that will be needed to harvest the, the longer, stemmier uh, fiber varieties. Leah, you have worked out in Canada as well in this industry. You were out yeah. there helping companies set up um, and, and creating their, their business plans. Uh, can you, and then you've moved back here, and you could tell us about your company here, yeah. but first off, can you just um, outline kind of the global marketplace out there at the moment for this, in, for hemp at an industrial scale? 
Yeah, sure. Well, hemp really came online because medical cannabis came online and the international trend moved from cannabis and people saw value in hemp. And with conversations hot about uh, circular economies, bioeconomies, the environment, hemp really offers an awful lot of solutions. Um, it's a great uh, plant for sequestering carbon. There's num numerous end uses. Um, therefore, there's countries all over the world coming online uh, pushing hemp. Yes, yeah, so the barriers seem to be coming down even in the US. Yes. Um, there was legislation passed there in the Farm Bill last yes. year. So, and they're saying that's a very lucrative market at yes. 22 billion could be made from it by 2022. So, um, Globally, there the opportunity is opening up for this area. Is that something Ireland can capitalise on? Oh, definitely. With Ireland um, and our history uh, internationally as an agricultural island, and uh, an island where people um, have trusted for products, you know, our, our brands are globally recognised. And for us to be able to come online w with Irish hemp, it's a great opportunity. It's fantastic. And so you're set up now down in Westmead. Uh, yeah. You have a, a laboratory down there where you're manufacturing and processing hemp. Um, how many farmers are you working with at the moment? Are you contracting? Uh, this year we have nine contracted farmers in total. Um, we basically are still in the process of setting up infrastructure. There is an awful lot needed, as Barry said. Um, we want to make sure that those farmers are supported with the infrastructure and education pieces that are involved. Next year, we're looking to expand to an awful lot more. Um, as our processes are put in place and as we um, develop our markets, we'll need more and more. So, Leah, a lot of farmers, anyone who's been interested in yeah. this and possibly diversifying into this space, what kind of return can be made from getting into this area? Depending on the end use and what markets are available, um, you're looking anywhere from 1,500 to 4,000 euro an acre um, for basically the, just the top part of the plant, that is, so the, the leaf, the flower, the seed. Um, and that's pretty good in comparison to some of the other options that are out there. Um, Barry, coming in on that, look, diversification is um, a huge way forward now for farming. And we saw with the, the National Farm Survey from Chagas recently, the, the state of incomes at the moment and the outlook isn't, you know, it's mixed, it's uncertain, these buzzwords thrown around the place. Um, but at the same time, I suppose the challenge with maybe going into hemp production, people might think back to Miscanthus and Willow back about 10 years ago. And uh, that didn't really develop as as was hoped at the time and even though there was government support behind it so why is there kind of a reluctance there among the farmer do you think to really um, expand into this area? I suppose the fear of failure is why a lot of people don't want to I suppose engage in, in, a, in a new area but I think there's a lot of people um, I found even since last Friday's conference there's an awful lot of people that are inquiring about the option of growing hemp on a contract basis for potential processors here in Ireland so I mean there's, there's a great momentum as you say there's um, farmers are looking for land use alternatives. We have 16% of the land area of Ireland that is controlled by uh, 40,000 farmers who have a standard output of less than 8,000 euro per year. And then within the National Farm Survey, you have about a third of those farmers who are not viable. You have the middle third who are sustainable because maybe they have enough farm income. So there's a lot of farmers within Ireland who are really genuinely looking for land use alternatives. As Leah mentioned, supports are going to be needed to get the infrastructure in, in place to get the processing facilities in place. I think there was, there's, um, the, the, the momentum is there, certainly, uh, especially with the younger farmers, people who have inherited a farm of land, looking, looking to see what can they do with that farm of land, turn a shilling for themselves, that they can actually uh, make, make a good viable income and that's going to support them and their families to stay in rural areas. That's the biggest challenge we have at the moment, is how do we encourage young people to stay in, in a rural area? It's different diversifications, as we spoke about before, with agri-tourism and uh, artisan food production, but this is something new and novel. This is a new opportunity that we haven't... Uh, there's a global demand, as Leah mentioned, for uh, various products that can be produced from hemp. It can take so many boxes in terms of construction industry, greenhouse gas abatement. So I think with a little bit more initiative and some more supports um, to develop the sector, I think we will see a massive um, increase in this area. And, and Chagas and the IFA, yourself, Leah, you're involved in this. Uh, there's a hemp working group out there at the moment. Um, Leah, what, are, what, what is that group driving at the minute? Are you engaging with government? What, what are you looking for? <clears throat> well, we started off just putting forward um, just the message behind hemp and, and starting conversations around hemp. Uh, we held a conference last week in Chagas 
Um, and moving forward, we're going to be uh, discussing policy and how we can change, make little changes that would have an enormous impact for farmers around the country. Um, particularly around, um, you know, organic schemes and payments for organic schemes and uh, licensing, making the licensing applications more streamlined, um, stuff like that, really. And finally, Barry, just there is another element to this in terms of rural jobs and rural employment uh, that co could come from that industry. Is that is that right? Yeah, I suppose what we, that conference last week as, as well was really trying to move the taboo around the whole area of hemp. Like uh, a lot of people would associate the crop with... Um, it is linked to the cannabis plant, but the varieties we're talking about again is the non psychoactive varieties. Um, but yes, job creation potential is massive in this area. We all, we heard from one of the speakers at the conference the last day that there's potential for 80,000 jobs in the short term uh, from hemp uh, in various areas, when, for whether that's on the fiber side, whether it's in the um, um, also in the seed side. Uh, so there's the opportunities will emerge very, very uh, quickly, I think because uh, this, the global demand is escalating at a rapid scale. We'll leave it there. Thank you both very much for joining us and we'll be watching that space closely.